Seekers, here we go. We've got some amazing insider information for you game wizards. Not off. We've got reviews of the latest games and what the experts think of those games. We've got a visit to Hotline City and what it all means. The Mario story, where, why and how did a little Italian with a moustache become a worldwide superstar. We've got tips and tricks on the latest software and we get to the bottom of how the games writers invent a Super Nintendo game. And we look at some of the excellent gear that you can get for your Super Nintendo. But first, let's get the show on the road with the Mario story. Mario, the most famous plumber of all time, actually started life as a carpenter who had lost his girlfriend to a gorilla in the 1980 game Donkey Kong. He was such a success that Japanese video game programmer Shigeru Miyamoto decided to make him the hero of a new two-player game called Mario Brothers. Mario joined with his younger brother Luigi and the rest is history. The follow-up game, Super Mario Brothers, sold over 43 million carts worldwide and Mario overtook long-established characters like Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck in popularity. His star has been rising ever since, as he's gained his new powers, explored even stranger worlds, and conquered even more grotesque enemies. Mario even took to the skies in Super Mario Bros. 3, and swam like a fish in his first 16-bit adventure, Super Mario World. Ever versatile, Mario has also proved himself a wizard behind the wheel in the amazing Super Mario Kart. Not satisfied with his gaming adventures, our intrepid Brooklyn plumber has become a film star of his very own in Super Mario Bros. the movie. To mark the new stardom, Nintendo have released the Mario game to end them all, Mario All-Stars, so that now you can relive every slip into danger, every hidden escape, and every moment of glory in Mario's long history. bravo -ski, mario -ski. He's a bit like me, you know. Obscurity one minute, in your living rooms the next. My name's Craig Charles, brought to you live by Nintendo. But the question I'd like to ask is, what about all those new, exciting games waiting to be played? The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Venture back to Hyrule and an age of magic and heroes. The predecessors of Link and Zelda face monsters on the march when a menacing magician takes over the kingdom. Only you can prevent his evil plot from shattering the land of Hyrule. In your quest, you will venture into twisting mazes, dungeons, palaces, and shadowy forests. Test your metal with mighty swords and magical weapons, or heft a boulder and hurl it at your enemies. If the going gets tough, dive into a river. You can swim to escape. Learn powerful spells, locate magic artifacts, and solve the mysteries of the evil magician and the hidden realm of Hyrule. Its secrets await you. Super Mario Kart. This is a split screen, one or two player go kart racing game in which you and either the computer or another player take the part of the Mario Brothers characters in a one off race or as part of a championship. Those of you familiar with all of the Mario games will notice that the tracks are made up of different scenes from previous games, such as castles and ice levels. You can also have great fun with the battle mode, in which two players play a form of bumper cars in order to burst one of the three balloons attached to the cart. This is one of the best racing games ever and definitely not to be missed. Starwing. This is the first game to use the Super FX chip. You are the pilot, Fox McCloud, commander of a squadron called the R-Wing. Your mission is to destroy the evil Venom Empire before their ambitious expansion plans can be put into practice. As you can see, the graphics are amazing, and the FX chip allows high-speed action as never seen before. You'll need all of your game-playing skills to lead your team and save your planets. Battletoads in Battle Mania. This is a very amusing beat-em-up with lots of humorous references to other arcade games. 
Zitz, Rash and Pimple, the Battletoads, have been invited to Tibet to watch a demonstration of a new computer game. When one of the images jumps out of the screen and kidnaps the princess, you'll have to play it to find out what happens next. Well, I think it's about time I beam down to meet the hotliners. Ooh, I hate it when that happens. This is Hotliners headquarters, but what does that mean? Hi. Hi. All right. You're known as a Hotliner. What does that mean? Hotliner is someone who has played and completed all NES, Game Boy and Super Nintendo games, as well as helping the consumer with information on games already out and forthcoming releases. So what's, what's this game you're playing now? At the moment, I'm playing Street Fighter 2 Turbo. He's playing Street Fighter 2 Turbo and getting paid for it. It's like he's died and gone to heaven. So what do the kids want to know about this game, then? The main question is how to do the special moves with the bosses. Show us a move, then. Right, the one I'll show you is the torpedo roll using Bison. What you have to do is hold back for two seconds and forward punch. Marvellous. The hotliners, on average, take 1,400 calls a day. That's 10,000 calls a week. That's over half a million calls a year. That's a whole lot of yak, yak, yak. Yeah, you got some cobwebs on you. Yeah? How long have you been here? Three years. Three years? Yep. So what's your favourite game at the moment, then? My favourite game at the moment must be Star Wing. Star Wing? Good game, good game. Come here. Have you been on Games Master and Games World and all that? I've done my bit. So you're a bit of a megastar, then? Well, you know. <laughs> Tell me, let me on the gen. What would I have to do to be a hotliner? I'll take you on a wing. On your wing. Years of training. Training, training. And then one day... Synchronicity. Synchronicity. The whole lot. You'll be able to be a hardliner. A hardliner. Constantly caring. Constantly caring. Loving. Giving. Constantly. So, do you think I could be a hardliner? Um, maybe. Maybe. I could take you under my wing. It's hard work, though. Uh -huh. You know, we've got a team of experts working round the clock, training us. And you've got to care, because we constantly care. Uh -huh. And you've got to have coordination and synchronicity. You've got to be well-mannered, good with people. Communicative, communicative. It's essential. OK, I haven't got the big time edge. I haven't got the total coordination and communication skills you need to make it as a hotliner. I can live with that. Time to review some games. Guide Aladdin and Abu through their quest to defeat the evil Jaffa. This is a Capcom and Disney game that features excellent cinematic graphics, superb sound, and amazing background. There is a password facility and bonus screens. This game will keep you interested forever. It's sure to be a hit. Mario Paint, a new art package for the Super Nintendo. It comes with a mouse so you can use it to draw, paint, and animate your own images. Compose music to go along with it and then when you finish you can save it and put it onto video to play it again at a later date. The only limitation with this game is your imagination. Nigel Mansell's World Championship Racing is the best simulator available for the Super Nintendo at this time. You get a chance to race all 16 courses around the world. The weather is constantly changing from sunny to cloudy to wet. You get a chance to change your tyres, aerofoils and your engines in the car. Uh, the speed and graphics on this game is amazing. Basically play the game and you'll see what I believe. A new cult hero hits your screens in the form of Plock. How do you describe Plock? Well basically he throws his arms and legs at the enemy. Plock is a massive cartoon platform game with incredible music and stunning graphics. Not only will this game go number one in the game chart, but number one in the music chart as well. The Lost Vikings, Olaf, Eric and Balog, have got to find their way back to their village. This may sound easy, but it's not. They've actually been warped through time and space. They've got to get through 37 different levels and six different worlds. They've got to combine the three skills of all the Vikings to get through this intensely puzzling and frustrating game. This is Bubsy's first adventure on the Super Nintendo, called Claw's Encounters of the Third Kind. On this Bobcat's travels, he has to avoid many pitfalls as well as collecting all the yarn balls that he may encounter. The 16 meg cart has great music and graphics as well as some of the best speech I've ever seen on the Super Nintendo. 
He has become a cult hero in America and looks like doing the same in the UK. These games are pretty fantastic, but what always amazes me, and I'll share this with you, is how they fit all the music, visuals, excitement and all-round top quality entertainment into one tiny cartridge. So, so how, how did we get, get all of that into, into this? this? I think an interesting thing to do, first of all, is to go back a couple of years when we first thought, shall we do a racing game? We knew racing games were very popular, and we thought we had the expertise and the programming skills to do a very good racing game. So we said, yeah, let's do a racing game. The next question we asked ourselves, is there a personality? Is there an endorsement we can add to the game which is going to make it even more exciting? We knew Nigel Mansell was doing well in the World Championship at that time. He wasn't World Champion at that time, but we thought he might be. And we started speaking to him. Would he be interested in helping us with our game? He was very interested. He likes computer games. He takes a Game Boy with him wherever he goes. And soon we had Nigel on board as well. So we were there. We knew we were doing a Nigel Mansell racing game. What we're going to do now is James is going to take us around the building and show us how from that point did we develop the game. OK, uh, now we've decided to go ahead and produce the Mansell game. We've actually done all the design work. The next stage is to start the programming. We have the computer on which the code's being written. The code that we write ends up in that box over there. That box is our version of the uh, Super Nintendo. It's similar to the one you would have at home, except that what it allows us to do is continually change the program that's running. So this is what's in the cartridge. That code there on that screen translates into this on your Super Nintendo. This is actually the original road that's used in the Nigel Mansell game. The game is nowhere near complete, but we have the actual basic road. When we were developing the Nigel Mansell game, the road was the most important thing. You've got a smooth and fast road system, particularly with something like a Grand Prix game. To get this far took, took us, you know, probably about six or seven months of programming. The next stage was producing the car graphics, the roadside objects, backdrops, all the other support graphics for the game. Um, and that's, that's what we're going to show you next. Everything that you see in the game will at some point have to be drawn. We actually have to draw the car with every wheel position to add realism to the actual game itself. As well as drawing Nigel's car, we have to draw the cars that you're going to be competing against in the game. Could we run the animation, Greg? Uh, this is so we can, in the game, we can actually give the impression of a car moving away from you or you moving up behind another car. How many frames did it take to do that? Um, we originally used eight frames, but uh, I doubled them up to 16 to make it a lot smoother. It works really well. The game isn't just about racing around the tracks, though. Another important part of the game is the actual selection and setting up of the car between each of the individual tracks in the game. In this section, you can select your tyres, change the aerofoil settings, etc. Below, we also see some graphics for the sponsors, which we're adding to the car graphics. Anything for realism. Whilst the rest of the team are working on the programming and finishing off the graphics for our game, here in the studio, Pat's working on the music and sound effects. Could we have a listen to some of the music, please, Pat? Certainly. Once I've composed the music, it's built up of tracks similar to this. OK, could we listen to a sound effect now, please, Pat? In an effort to create as much realism as possible, we asked Renault to record the engine sound from the actual F1 car itself. And this is the sound effect that we use within the game. So we've got the program, the graphics, the music and sound effects. Let's go and test that game. What we do is arrange for the programmer to send the finished game down to this machine. And using this machine, we actually load the program up into these two chips. These chips now contain the whole game. The games are put into a cartridge, into a prototype cartridge. And then these are given to the testers to test. Here in Gremlin's test department, we have a team of people whose job it is to play the games. Our testers have to play the games for hours and hours, testing for bugs or for things that shouldn't even be there. When the game is as action-packed and as exciting as possible, only then is it ready to be put into a finished cartridge. And that's how we get all of that excitement into one tiny cartridge. between me and you, right? What I want to know is, how can you cheat at some of the games? 
Don't breathe a word. Super Mario All-Stars. On the Lost Levels, World 1, Level 1, if you want to get some extra lives, this is what you have to do. Go to the first set of blocks and bash the second block to uncover the hidden mushroom. Bounce it with your head over the end block, leaving the Koopa inside. Grab the mushroom, being very careful not to scroll the screen past the row of blocks. Now break the first block and the third block and leave the Koopa patrolling on the fourth. Jump through the gap you've made and remove the three blocks from above your head. Now carefully make a small jump onto the Koopa and Mario should bounce on and off, eventually clocking up one-ups. Leave it to carry on until the time runs out and you'll have 128 lives. Also on the Lost Levels, World 3 Level 4, the way to get to the end is to stay along the bottom until you've heard a high-pitched beep, then stay along the bottom again until you hear another beep. Now go all the way to the top and stay there until you hear two more beeps. If whilst going along the top you find a jump that's very hard to make, jump down to the floor and you'll find four hidden blocks. You can now use these to get back up to the top route and make it all the way to the end. On Mario 2, World 1, Level 3, go to near the end of the level and get the last potion bottle before the door. Carry it past the door and throw it down near the pot. Then enter subspace and go down the pipe whilst you're in subspace, and this will now warp you to World 4. Mario 3. On Mario 3, World 1, Level 3, you'll find near the end of a level a white rectangular block in the air. Jump onto this and kick the turtle off. Now kneel down on the block until you fall through and land behind the scenery. Now run to the right as if you were going to complete the level, but instead of finishing the level, it will take you to a secret mushroom house, and inside this mushroom house is a warp whistle. Plock. When you get to level 3 of Plock, go to nearly the end of the level and look out for the arrow pointing downwards. Jump down and shoot the plum in the tree three times. This will take you to a bonus stage. You now have to beat the timer in this bonus stage to get warped to the end of the island. To get the best out of your games, you should try your hand with the Scoremaster. Designed for use on the desktop, the arcade-style Scoremaster has a responsive 8-way joystick with 6 buttons. These are oversized for ease of use and have an auto-fire switch for each button. The Scoremaster also features a slow-motion operation with 2 speeds. So whether it's quick quick or slow slow, the Scoremaster will put an extra kick into your game. There is also a great accessory known as the Nintendo Scope. This is an amazing piece of gear which is an infrared firing machine, laser accurate to one television pixel. There are some great games specially designed for this ballistic bazooka, like Battle Clash and Yoshi Safari. Why not get one for your shoulder and start blasting? I hate to tell you, Thrill Seekers, but it's time for me to go. Have fun on your Super Nintendo. And this may sound strange, but... I'll be back! Hasta la vista, baby! Pew, 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 pew! Hey, not so heavy on the interaction! Pew, 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 p